Hello everyone, I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com. It's Wednesday, January 12th, <clears throat> excuse me. It's Wednesday, January 12th, 2022 already at 11 a.m. Central Time as I'm broadcasting to you live. Happy 2022 or 2022. Um, a big welcome to you if you are um, coming back from seeing previous lives with me and a, a special Welcome to you if you're new to my channel. If you would like to get in on the live chat while we are live, you'll want to make sure that you're logged into your Google or YouTube account. And then um, you can start typing away in the live chat area. If you don't want to log in, you can just sit back and enjoy. And if you're watching after the live, there is another comment section um, that you'll find and you can comment afterwards. Either way, I hope that you let me know that you're here and that you're um, where you're from, uh, what's, your, what's your crafting experience, maybe what you're doing right now. If you have questions while we're doing the live, that sort of thing. Communicate with each other too. It's fun to hear the conversa or see, read the conversations that are going on. A super big welcome to Miss Trisha Josephs. Trisha is my moderator. She helps me out during the live because I can't actually come back and answer questions after the live is done. And I am definitely not very good at paying attention to those comments while the live is going on. So um, make sure that if you have questions that you tag her too, so that she really sees your, your comment or question. The way that you tag her in a post is you just start typing her name, T-R-I-C-I-A, and you have to spell it correctly. Um, Trisha Josephs will then come up. Oh, and you gotta do the at sign first, sorry. Type the at sign, then T-R-I-C-I-A, and you'll be able to click on her name and it will, it will, it will be highlighted for her so that she can actually um, see it amongst all the other comments. So, all right, we're gonna move on and start with what we're going to show today. Um, I have some paper crafting goodness for you. If you're a beginner, you're going to feel very welcome in this. If you're a casual crafter, you're going to love it. And if you're an avid crafter, you're gonna find ways that you can maybe make things quicker, <laughs> but still pretty. Because sometimes us avid crafters, when we own a lot, we wanna use a lot. And so this is using less product than you normally probably would pull out. Um, we don't have any die cuts or embossing or anything too elaborate. Simple but pretty cards today. Step-by-step um, -step directions for making them. And I'm also gonna give tips along the way. We're gonna use new products. We're gonna use products from the um, 2000, the January through June 2022 mini catalog um, and or the celebration brochure, which is a fun promotion going on. So I'll talk about those as we go. Um, sit back and watch or enjoy and be in the chat. What else do I wanna tell you as we go? I think that's it. I, um, <laughs> some of you are asking, I can already see some comments coming through. How was your surgery? It went well. Thank you for the, um, the week off last week. I, I needed to recover and um, you know, rest is good after you have someone cut into you, right? <laughs> so I had a couple um, hernias. I thought I just had one. Turns out I had two. So he repaired two. Um, and uh, I'm standing. I'm feeling great. The only thing is it's really hard to resist being as active as I normally am. Like I'm not supposed to lift anything yet and I can't exercise yet. <laughs> so it's been really hard to just kind of sit still. But that's okay. That's okay. I'm getting better and I have my follow-up appointment this afternoon. So hopefully he'll tell me that all is well. Um, all right. I think that's it. So, oh, what I, the reason why I brought that up is because I have not had a chance to look at the live comments from last week, but um, I, did, uh, I did read the comments that were after the live. So if any of you commented during last week's live and I didn't answer a question that maybe was just for me, can you chime in on this video? Because again, I'm not sure if I'll get to that yet. Um, got a busy weekend ahead here. So I'm going to bring up the supply list now. We're gonna move over to the computer screen and you can take a screenshot if you'd like to, or you can just wait because all of this information and this actual PDF will be available at 12.15 in a little over an hour on my blog post. And where do you find that blog post? Well, you'll wanna look in the description because the description of the video has a ton of information. Um, it always uh, surprises me when I have people watch a whole video and then they say, what kind of paper did you use? I'm like, mm, maybe they didn't really listen. 
because <laughs> all of the information is in the description of the video for supplies. Um, for the link to the video, for links to special information, that sort of thing. And when you click on the, the blog post um, at 1215 or later, um, you'll be able to access the, the supplies link to my online store. You'll be able to see photos of all the finished cards. Oh my gosh, you know what I did? <laughs> Are you guys? Okay, yeah, silly me. I gotta, I gotta correct this PDF before it goes live on my blog. Do you guys notice what I did? <laughs> I have the wrong photos in there. I forgot to switch the photos. Those are photos from the last time. Those are my um, ladybug cards. Sorry, I'll fix that, I promise. Anyways, um, you can see that the, the measurements are in there. You'll be able to access those in the, in the um, blog post as well. <laughs> so, silly me. Okay, um, but I got the date and the title right and all the other information. <laughs> Let's go away from that. I don't want to look at that anymore. Bad, bad, Rachel. You messed up on that, silly you. Okay, here we go. So, some things that you'll want to have if you want to make quick and easy cards. Basic white cardstock. Um, the clean and pretty um, cards that are easy to make, a ton of them just have white cardstock, white cardstock layers, um, that sort of thing. So, we're going to cut our white cardstock. <laughs> I can see you all because your comments come up, up a little bit later than when I'm actually talking. There's like this delay between us during the live. And so now all of, all of you are laughing at me because of what I did with my PDF. Sorry. Okay, so we're going to cut our cardstock and we're going to cut it in half. In fact, you know what? Let's do this as if we're going to make two of them. So let's share that tip real quick. We're lifting the arm of the trimmer here and we are going to bring it to the five and a half inch mark. So that is the halfway inch mark between 11 inches, right? We're gonna use our light blade and we're gonna score between them. Then we're gonna turn it this way and we're gonna cut halfway at the four and a quarter inch mark. <laughs> and now we have two card bases. Okay, so um, this one uh, we will set aside and then we're going to bring in another piece. Now, if you wanted to, you could make your card from all one piece. So you see how this is a layer. This piece here measures just slightly smaller. It is four and an eighth inch by five and three eighths inches. So it's going to form as a layer. Now you could cut that from your one sheet and then this could be for punching. But because we're going to make a few cards today, I'm going to keep that in my pile of needed papers over here. Okay, so we've got this ready to go and we have our scrap. So these pieces here we're gonna stamp. This piece is just, this folded piece here is just gonna act as our card base, the, the thing that we're gonna layer everything onto. So what else do you need for simple but quick cards? Pretty stamps. <laughs> pretty stamps, stamps that are gorgeous. And I have to tell you, this type of stamp image, the distinctive stamp image with the word ink in it, I-N-K, um, is uh, a, a thing that Stampin' Up! has in a lot of, like it's, it's one of their, it's one of their categories of stamps, okay? And what it, what it refers to is the light and darkness of the imagery. Um, it's done with tiny, tiny little dots. Um, that when when inked up they have like there's areas where there's dots that are tight together and then there's areas where they're further apart so um, anyways really pretty cool stuff here <laughs> you can see as you're looking at it so you can get that light and dark look um, it just has a more realistic look it has a layered look to it it has a depth look like there's um, you know things up close things far away so we're going to use this stamp set. It is a new stamp set from the mini catalog called Flowing Flowers. I love the sentiments in it. You can see the fonts are gorgeous and the sayings are perfect, kind of all, all around kind of stamp set, right? All occasion. And then we have these three floral images. Now this one here has a leaf on it or a set of leaves and I wanted to use my leaves separately. <laughs> So I did what a lot of you call stamp surgery, and it's really easy to do, especially on like the clear photopolymer ones because it's not as thick to cut through. On a stamp like the red rubber stamps, you need a little bit stronger of a scissors. 
I took that stamp and I cut it into two pieces. <laughs> I just really, really wanted the leaf to be separate. So you can see where the cut is, where I did my surgery. And I cut right through the little speckles. So I have some speckles on here and some on here. Um, there, there definitely is kind of a line that happens when I stamp this. So I still have to be careful. It's not like the speckles are more random or dispersed or whatever. You can kind of see that there's a, a line there. So when I do connect this leaf to other areas, I have to make sure that it's kind of in a flat section of my card. Um, but this one, yeah, same thing. It just, it, that little cluster there, you just want to make sure it's um, kind of connected somewhat. So we're going to stamp. <laughs> Let's go ahead. I think this is the piece we need. <clears throat> Yes, this is our four and an eighth inch piece. Okay, so we're gonna stamp on this. I just wanna make sure, this is our smaller one? Yeah, that's our scrap. <laughs> we're gonna stamp on this with some really pretty colors. Okay, so that's the next thing that you need. White cardstock, pretty stamp images, and then pretty colors. <laughs> okay, um, so we're using Fresh Freesia, Polished Pink, and Daffodil Delight for our ink colors for our flowers, and then the pair of pizzazz for the leaves. So we'll just open all of these up. Ink pads are really cool. If you're not familiar with Stampin' Up! ink pads, the ink is actually stored in the lid. So when you, when you close up your pad and you put it on your shelf, the ink stays at the surface of the ink pad. And they also kind of crank into the, the base here. So super easy to kind of have in front of you. Just make sure that you're not messing up your, your colors. So now we're going to put all of our stamps with our colors of inks. There we go. Okay, we're ready. So I have to punch a sentiment first. I forgot about that. Let's do that first. Let's bring in our tuxedo black ink. And this kind of pad, by the way, the ink is in the base. So when you store it, you want to flip it upside down. Okay. So we're going to grab that. We're going to grab one of my favorite looking sentiments in there. I love this thank you. It's so pretty. And I love that it's um, it's more of a squarish look. So it could be put into a circle. It could put be put into a square. You know, it's kind of compact. And, uh, and it could be punched out with this really, really cool punch that we have called the Label Me Lovely Punch. So we've stamped it down. And sometimes you can punch first and then stamp but with this particular stamp it's not see-through um, it is it's a cling stamp so you can you know see around the edges of it but sometimes that does not make it super easy sorry label me lovely so we're going to open that up with the little knob here at the bottom this is closed this is open so when you close it you want to close it all the way like that and then bring this into place and then open it like that. Now, I, I did see a comment on the after lives from last week. Someone had hurt their hand. So their, their hand was really close to where you squeeze a punch and you kind of want to avoid that. <laughs> you really want to avoid having it next to your chest and then, <laughs> I'll show you, next to your chest and then punching because people have hurt themselves there in my classes in the past. You want to, uh, if you got to use two hands, just hold it further away from you and punch this way or punch this way. If you can do it with one hand, make sure that your skin is far away from where that part meets. Does that make sense? I don't want anybody getting hurt out there. So we'll go ahead and line this up now that it's stamped. Make sure that everything looks good to go. And see, I'm holding it with two hands. And we'll punch it out and we're going to use that to guide us in the floral images so we're not going to tape it down or anything but we're going to we're going to have it where we need it to to be i'm wearing do you guys did you guys comment on my clothes today so i'm wearing white because white is the main color but i i wore my summery lace top because i know that when i wear solid white sometimes it looks too bright and it kind of messes up with the light in the room so i decided to get my beach jewelry on too <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to ink up our big pink flower. This is going to be our main um, main starter image. And we're just going to stamp that right about there and press that down firmly. And then we're going, isn't that pretty? Gorgeous, right? And then we're going to ink it up again. 
And I like to move my stamp around the surface of my ink pad just in case um, the ink has kind of lessened a little bit in the middle. So when you move it around, you get more of an even kind of inking. So now we're gonna flip it this way and we're gonna stamp it down here in the corner like that. And we're gonna get a little bit of a messy table so you could put like copy paper, typing paper, grid paper, Stampin' Up! sells this grid paper that you can use to kind of protect your surface. Now let's use the purple. Okay, and that was polished pink. Did I tell you that? I did tell you that. Um, now we're gonna use the purple ink, which is Fresh Freesia, and we're inking that up. And we're gonna stamp that so it fits kind of into this little crevice here, like so. And you can see how I kind of lined up that little section there with the side of the flower. I'm gonna zoom in just a bit here. Now press it down, press it down evenly. Don't rock your stamps if you're a beginning uh, crafter. Um, you don't wanna ink up any edges. So now we've kind of filled in that little space and we can check with our label. Hey, that looks good, yay. Okay, we're gonna do another purple flower, um, but I think let's do, let's do the yellow flower first. And I think my yellow was not real, um, real inked up. I should have re-inked it. So um, hopefully it won't get too light because our sample is sort of on the light side. You know what? <laughs> you know what? Let's do this. Let's grab our re-inkers and our little tool that came with our white ink pad. And we'll just give it some ink. How does that sound? So you got your little re-inker bottle. It's like an eyedropper bottle. Don't put it in your eyes. <laughs> and you just squeeze a little out and you'll notice it wants to soak in. On our kind of ink pads, it wants to soak in kind of right where you put it. So that's why you need like a spoon or a credit card or like a little spatula thing like this because then you gotta kind of move it around on the surface of the ink pad. That was a thirsty pad. That ink soaked in fast. And then you can just clean that off. Okay, let's see if that will give us a little bit more yellow. Okay, so we're gonna ink that and stamp it down into this little area here, like that. Oh yeah, that's a little bit, a little bit more than I had on my original card. Okay, we're gonna use that one again, but let's do our Fresh Freesia color. So that was Daffodil Delight for my yellow. And now we're gonna come in with the purple again, and we're gonna bring that right into this area here. So now we've kind of made a little wreath here, didn't we? We made a wreath with our flowers, making sure, yep, that's gonna look beautiful. Let's do another set of yellow flowers. Let's do those up here, kind of in this section. And we're done with that. So we'll close that up and move it out of the way. It's always good to close up your ink pads that you're not using and make sure that they're all the way tight. That one didn't shut all the way because you don't want them to, um, to get any uh, dry, you know, dry ink or whatever. You could also stamp on the inside, by the way. You could stamp on the inside of your card base if you want to. That would make the florals just kind of continue on through, make it super pretty. Okay, now for our green leaves. So the green leaves, um, we're going to bring them right into this little spot here. Because see how there was kind of a flat area there? And then we'll also have some up at the top here. So now I can do my leaves wherever I want them because I did my stamp surgery. <laughs> Fun! Fun, fun, fun. Now, if you're gonna make a mass load of these, I recommend the Stamparatus tool. So you could have like, th you know, three of your fl flowers set up where you want them to be on your Stamparatus and just kind of crank out the same, um, you know, three flowers one at a time on your sheets and then change them, move them to the other three areas, you know, that sort of thing. So what's the next thing that you need to make pretty cards? I mean, this is pretty right? It's going to be pretty. But to make it gorgeous, <laughs> another thing that I recommend is some sparkle. Um, so we're going to bring in these iridescent rhinestone basic jewels. And can you see the colors of these rhinestones, that the colors that they kind of show off? I based these colors here on what I saw 
in the rhinestones, in the light of my room. So I saw pink, I saw purple, I saw yellow coming through. And so that's why I chose those colors for my flowers. And because they're iridescent, they go really well with the iridescent little glitter uh, pieces in the white glittered organdy ribbon. <clears throat> on the black, <clears throat> excuse me, my goodness, I'm not drinking enough water. Um, on the black glittered organdy ribbon, the, the glitter is just kind of a silver glitter, but on the white, it's kind of a iridescent-y one. So I've got my pieces cut already, got them ready to go. We're gonna have two pieces that are about, what did I say, five inches, five and a half inches or whatever on the, on the description or the measurements. So we're just gonna bring one strip across like this to save us on money. We're not gonna tie a whole length around and then tie a bow. We're gonna do this little trick. So we're just gonna go across like this. We're gonna make sure it's lined up. You can use a ruler or you can use your grid paper. And then you just kind of hold it like this, grab your seal, or you could even use like scotch tape or something. Make it come over the top like that, like that. And now you've got this look that the ribbon is wrapped all the way around the card, but it's not. And then this piece here is just going to fold in half. That's all we're going to do with that. Super simple ribbon tricks. So if you are somebody who hates ribbon because you don't like to tie bows, well, now you've just gained a new way to use that ribbon. So what I did is I folded it in half, but I made sure that the ends were not coming together. They're kind of separate from each other. And I angled it, and then I put adhesive on the back side where it's gonna pick up that ribbon. And if you need to, you can come back here and add a little bit more adhesive underneath, but you just wanna make sure that the ribbon lies flat against that adhesive. You can then come in and trim up the ends of your ribbon, kind of like little, put little points in on, on the ends there like that. So that adds a little bit of a sparkle. Let's bring it up on dimensionals. That is the next thing that I think is super, um, super inexpensive, but yet does make your cards just really stand out. Uh, quick and easy, simple, beautiful cards. Dimensionals are a great tool. So they are an adhesive that gives it a, a little bit of a lift. I think almost like an eighth of an inch, maybe not quite an eighth of an inch. So that creates some shadow, some depth. Um, just really stunning looking, isn't it? Okay, then we want to have our rhinestones on there. And you could use like a pointy uh, pin or your scissors. Another tool that we have though that you'll want to invest in eventually just because it's a, an all-purpose kind of all-around handy tool is this take your pick. So I'm going to just put um, like a little dimension, I'm sorry, a little uh, glitterish look here and then we'll grab because there's three different sizes on this sheet. I'm going to grab another one. So I'm just pushing it. It grabs it with that sticky end and then I just stick it down. It's super easy to apply with the take your pick tool. Then the last step is to add it to the front of your card. And remember that little tip that I shared? If you're seeing an overlap in the cardstock, then you'll want to flip it because you want your overlap, any kind of opening that is exposed there, to not be seen. So you could take and put this up on dimensionals. Uh, one in each corner would be great, or you can just make it go flat. It's up to you. I'm just taping it down flat. Very economical card. You invested in stamps, ink, one cardstock color, um, a little bit of bling or sparkle, and ad the tools, adhesive, that kind of thing. So yeah, super simple card, right? So there we go. There's uh, one style card that you can make with this set. Now we're gonna set this stamp set aside for now. In fact, I'm gonna grab all of these little images there and just t stick them back here so I have more room on my table and I'm gonna bring in another stamp set. This stamp set is called Gentle Waves and it is a single stamp. It's a background stamp. Um, it's shown on page 45 of the mini catalog. And it's kind of hard to see until you look right down here. But you'll notice some real pretty samples being done with it throughout the book. 
Um, so Gentle Waves, it is not distinctive, although it ha kind of has that look, right? Um, it definitely has my, that pointillism look to it. I think they should have called it a distinctive stamp, but it's probably not realistic enough looking. I don't know. But it, it has that beautiful flow um, water, basically, right? W gentle waves. So, of course, my mind goes right to Coastal Cabana. <laughs> that is the ink color we're bringing in. And here's our stamp mounted onto one of our clear block. This is our largest of our clear blocks. It is size F. So when you ink up a stamp like this, you don't want to do it the way that I just shared, where you have your ink pad flat on the table and then you put your stamp on top of it and go like that. Because this is so large, the best results you're going to get are if you turn the stamp upside down and you apply the ink, and I'm shaking the camera, I'm so sorry, and you apply the ink this way, upside down. You can see what areas may not have inked up well enough. You can make sure that there's no distinct lines. Now I'm not inking all the way across because I'm only going to use this side of my stamp. I'm going to bring in that layer again the four and an eighth by five and three eighths inch layer and i'm going to set it gently on top upside down if you have a side to your paper and then i'm going to use a piece of scrap paper and i'm going to put it on top of that and then i'm going to press evenly some people have brayers in their collection a brayer is a great way to press evenly um, you get even pressure and a brayer is kind of a, a large rubber rolling tool. Just make sure that if you're doing it by hand that you're going in every corner because I did mass produce this one. This is where I had to make several um, or I got to make several. I love paper crafting so <laughs> I never have to do it. Um, but yeah I got to make several of these cards. See how this ink here would have gotten all over my hands? <laughs> So then after you lift that off, you just peel this away and you have a beautiful, um, it looks like you're looking out into the ocean, right? It's gorgeous. So we'll set that off to the side here. We're gonna work on this piece and get our scrap paper back in here. This time we're going to bring in another punch. This is called the tailored tag punch. And we're gonna use a sentiment from a stamp set called On the Horizon. This stamp set here uh, I purchased because, of course, it's going to have some great imagery to go with the gentle waves. And I just love the whole beachy themed uh, stamp sets. There's a, there's a few of them in the new collection of products that came out. So we're going to take our stamp. That's Oh, it's on my Stamparatus. That's why. This is when I show you the Stamparatus. Now, this is a more expensive tool. I believe it's like in the $50 range US. Um, but what's great about it is if you're going to mass produce a bunch of these. Oh, did I get any ink on there? No, I didn't. If you're going to mass produce a bunch of these cards, you can. And let me grab my pile. Oh, there it is. You can do so so easily by using a tool like this. This is great for Christmas cards, wedding cards, anything that you're gonna do a lot of, okay? So I have my my um, little piece here. <laughs> my plate, that's what it's called, it's called a plate. I've got my magnet, which I've tied a piece of packaging tape around and some fun um, stamping up. <clears throat> we had a, what's that called, that tape? You know that tape? <laughs> Now I'm gonna. Now I'm not gonna remember words. Um, yeah, yeah. That that stuff that you decorate cards with. It's a special tape. You guys are gonna. You're gonna say it. I know you are. I've got my grid paper. I've got um, this little extra piece of magnet just because it gives an extra lift. This is from Stampin' Storage. Um, and then of course there's my my base here. So I've shoved everything in. My grid paper has a piece of paper taped onto it. This piece of paper here has a punched out shape from the tailored tag punch right here. So I've punched it out, I've set it down on here, then I took my stamp and I laid it on top where it was going to line up nicely. And then I took this plate, in. it was hinged in here, and I 
set it on top of the stamp to lift it up and I've grabbed the stamp. So now I have my stamp in here and I can just take a bunch of those punched out pieces. Let me just do one here. Let's just punch one. We're going to take that and we're going to set it in here. And then we're going to take our ink pad and we're going to ink up our stamp just like that. And we'll take and oops, magnet would help because then it doesn't move on us, especially after we're done stamping in case we need to stamp again. So we've got our magnet holding it down. We've pressed, we lift up, and then we say, you know what, I want it darker. So you can ink up that um, stamp again, and then you can take and bring it back down and make it a little bit darker. Here's the difference. This one here versus this one here. Can you see the difference? This one was only stamped once. This one was stamped obviously twice. So it's much bolder, a deeper black, um, just stands out on the card more, right? So that's done. Showed you how to mass produce that. And we're going to grab our pieces for the card. Okay, so we need this. We need our card base. We need this punched layer. And we're going to bring in one other pretty thing. So you can get some, some of these special papers that um, they kind of like the ribbon or the embellishments. It's just a special paper that adds a little bit of um, embellishing to your, to your card. So this is vellum cardstock. And we're just going to punch out one of those shapes like that so that we have a layered label look. So we're going to take this piece now and we're going to put the ribbon behind it. So let's go ahead and take that same ribbon. There's our same ribbon. We're going to go through it an angle with our adhesive. We're going to fold this in half. We're going to tape this down like that. We're going to make sure it's all kind of stuck in place. And then this piece and we can just go right over the top of it. We're not going to do dimensionals on this. We're going to go right on top of this piece here. So we're just going to center it all in there. And it might help to look at the back side because you can kind of see where the corners are of the punched piece. Okay, so that's layered on there. Let's trim up the ends like that and like that. So it's just a little bit more elaborate with the added vellum. Let's do the same thing we did with the other card. We're going to kind of just place it on there. You can use grid paper or whatever. Or just eyeball it if you need to. Flip it over. Add your tape. Add your tape. And then we're going to tape this whole piece down. Okay. Now one thing that I'm going to do on this card is add one more piece of imagery with the black ink. That is this set of birds here. Okay, so I mean it's it's you're looking out into the ocean you might as well have some little birdies. So we'll ink these guys up and we'll just stamp them right in this upper left corner nice and firm. And now this piece can be added on with our dimensionals, which we've hidden from Rachel's view. <laughs> They're here. There they are. Okay. So I'll go here, here, here. And do you see where I'm placing the dimensionals? This is vellum. So if you have the dimensionals beyond where the white paper is, you're going to see the adhesive and it's going to look tacky and bad. <laughs> so don't do that. This gets stuck down like that. Now I have some really fun embellishments that I want to introduce you to that are newer. So besides using these little guys on this card, we're also going to bring in something called the faux sea glass shapes. These are new and kind of go with the beach theme, right? So you can see 
We've got, um, this is, I believe, Coast, yeah, this is Coastal Cabana. No, Bermuda Bay, they called it. But it's a super, super light version. And then this is Old Olive, but a super, super light version. This looks like Coastal Cabana. This looks like Pear Pizzazz. You could even look like Granny Apple Green. So because it's a lighter version of the colors that they say it is, and that's white, by the way. But because it's lighter, you can really play around and add those to colors that seem pretty close. And in fact, sometimes embellishments will take on the look of the color that you're you're using in the card because they're so, you know, right next to each other. And these are clear, clear-ish, I should say. They have a transparency to them. So you're going to see the colors underneath too. Let's go ahead and add our, let's start with these guys here. Let's add, let's add a rock here. Let's add a little rock here. Let's add one of these gems right about there. Let's add another rock here. Uh, let's add a big one right about there. Do you see what I'm doing? I'm make, making them look like they're kind of stacked on top of each other at the bottom of this punched piece as if they're kind of at the bottom of the water. So just a bit of bling. Fun, fun, simple, easy, quick cards. And that's all you need, right? Let's do one more. And this one is using a stamp set called, where did my book go? There it is. Um, it's one that I actually did not like. <laughs> and then I said to myself, oh my gosh, do you see those leaves there? They look like they're in a large version of these here. And I'm sorry, the pineapple's cute. So I decided I was going to play around with these images because they are also distinctive images. And the stamp set's free. So if I can show you a free item that you can get with a $50 purchase, you might have even more of an excuse to say, you know what, let me, let me try some of these products that she shared. <laughs> So that stamp set looks like this, Island Vibes. Again, it's free. You can't buy it separately, but you can earn it with a $50 order. Um, let's grab our card base. Let's cut a layer for our top of our card. Again, we're using just the basic white. And I need my, there it is. This time we're not going to use vellum, but we do have another pretty set of papers that you might want to try out. So there's our layer piece. Then we need our, and where's my finished card? <laughs> you know what? That's the problem. When you do way, oh, here it is. When you do all of these cards, you tend to kind of, you know, there's just too many supplies on the table. We're going to flip this over and use this. Actually, you know what? I already did it. Ha <laughs> ha. Yay, it is over here. Is this the one? This is the one. So that's already stamped. I'm using a different one because it looks like I have ink on my hands. There we go. So there's that. And then we're going to bring in this paper. And this paper is a specialty paper that's in our annual catalog. It actually comes with another sheet. We're going to punch with our Label Me Lovely punch. <clears throat> and that's going to be our under layer for that piece there. We're going to bring in a different ribbon though this time because the embellishments that we're going to use are not going to be the iridescent rhinestones. We're going to use gold as our embellishment. So I brought in this ribbon here. And this ribbon is um, our art, what is it called? Our fine art ribbon. So it's kind of like a crumb cakey color with threads of gold in it. So we need a couple of those, same length, and then we're going to start stamping. So let's bring in, or maybe I wasn't even going to demonstrate this one. Maybe I was just going to show it, but you'll want to do the same thing where you put this onto your block and um, onto your block and then you turn it upside down to ink it up because it is a larger stamp image. So I think, yes, I was just going to show you the finished, the finished, I was going to show you the finished of this one. Okay, so here it is. 
So there's that card. So the same idea, but I stamped that image on the top and the bottom. I've added the fine art ribbon across the middle, taped it to the back. Again, you could put it up on dimensionals if you want more depth there. And then I've folded this piece in half and stuck it between these two layers with just seal adhesive. Put this up on dimensionals so it pops up and gives shadow. And these little embellishments are called the brushed brass butterflies. Because they don't have a super shiny um, look to them, because they are brushed brass, they look closer to this style that you see in the ribbon and in the specialty paper. Now I said it came, the gold paper came with another color. This is the rose gold version of that paper. So these two colors come together, six by six sheets in a pack. And this is an embellishment that I think you must have if you're going to be using this set of papers. It's called the brush metallic adhesive back dots. Um, I used the butterflies instead just because I wanted that island, island vibes kind of feel to the card um, to kind of follow through. And of course, butterflies, yeah, it's just so relaxing. Um, but yes, you could use those instead. I also want to introduce you to this image here, which I didn't put on the card eventually because I kind of want it to look like the same style of card that I did with the other two. But I stamped it separately on here and I inked up the trees and then I came in with my basic black marker and inked up the trunk um, of that little mini tree or the pot or whatever and then I inked up the pot separately but then I used Wink of Stella which is a great metallic-y sheen kind of paint on um, shimmer and I just painted inside the pot stamped the thank you from the other stamp set and if you want to you could take and mount that in the middle like that less ribbon um, a little bit more follow through on the imagery I actually like this version better, so I might peel that off and just stick this on instead. But just so that you, you know that this image coordinates with that image, when I saw that I was like, well, perfect, because now you have a mini image and you have a maxi image. You've got your background image right there. So I wanted to show you that. And then I also wanted to share with you, before we move on to drawing for prizes, I wanted to share with you this, these, um, these, these sheets that I stamped separately. So you remember the, how big that stamp was. So you could do horizontal cards, right? You could actually fill up that whole space with that size piece of paper, a quarter sheet of cardstock. You could fill up that whole space. That's how big that image is. Then this idea I got from the catalog because on page 45, which is why I memorized it, there is a card. Where is it? Oh, maybe it's not on 45. It's somewhere in the catalog where they show this brown and this blue as if this is the sand. I mean, just a cool idea. Just ink this up in a different color and you've got your sand and you've got your water. And now that brought me to this idea. So you could have a sunrise or sunset kind of look. This could be clouds in the sky. Um, I used a blending brush in parts of the ink thinking that was gonna help, but it kind of messed up some of the ink areas. But yeah, um, maybe doing Stampin' Right markers on there and then um, stamping it down. But I was using big ink pads and I was trying to connect colors and the blending brush didn't really help too much. <laughs> um, and then I did I stamped it again thinking would I get a, a lighter version, but that one, anyways, that was the result I got. Um, so yeah, kind of fun. Just think outside the box. Don't think of it as just waves. It could be a sky. All right, let's bring all those cards back out so you can see them again. They are so easy and quick to make, you guys. Super pretty, super fun. We'll just put these like that. Does that fill up the... Or maybe we'll just put three out. <laughs> We're not going to get them all in there. There we go. Got to have the waves up close there. Okay, and then we'll just stick that in the upper corner. So in case you want to see them all at once, take a screenshot or whatever. Um, so yeah, fun, fun, fun. <laughs> so I'm just going to review. Layered white cardstock, dimensionals. 
embellishments with a little bit of sparkle, pretty stamp images and colors that you like. And then, um, what was the last thing I wrote down? Oh, punches for a focal point for your sentiment. And you've got these instant, quick, inexpensive, super pretty cards. So I hope that you enjoyed that demonstration. Um, I had just a ton of ideas. I have been creating, and especially this past weekend, I was creating up a storm um, because I, I was finally done with my pain meds and all that. And I'm like, I got to get in my craft room. So I got in there and I just... I've been creating left and right. I already have plans out for two more weeks for these Wednesday lives, <laughs> but this one was just just a, a simple way to ease into new products, to show you a lot of new products also, um, to hopefully instill some excitement in beginner crafters or maybe the more casual that don't have a lot of things yet. You can do it. You can make pretty cards without having all of those big fancy things, okay? Um, what do I want to share? Okay, so new products, I already talked about that. Celebration, talked about that. You can pick from this mini catalog. So if you're purchasing from now through the end of February, you can purchase and, and earn free products. There's paper packs in here and there's stamp sets in here. Um, there's things that you can get for free by purchasing $100 worth. So they're like twice as uh, twice the amount in value and there's even this stamp set here that's exclusive that's only available to people who have really large parties um, and this one is a distinctive stamp image too I was going to demo this and I thought no that's going to cause frustrations for people who don't want to have a $300 party or order <laughs> but this is a beautiful stamp set with a beautiful stamp image in it um, and I don't even know how to pronounce it Calming Camellia it's obviously maybe the name of the flower I don't know, but super pretty. So I might have to make some cards with that too. And um, so celebration, um, virtual tour. The virtual tour is on right now. If you're not familiar with what that is, it's something that I've been talking about on my blog and in my newsletters. Make sure you subscribe to my blog or my newsletter so that you get that information, any kind of stamping up news, news in, you know, from my business. But the virtual tour is just that. It's a tour of new products in video format, but through a PDF. So if you place a minimum $50 order through me or one of the other demonstrators that are involved in this virtual tour, and in my case, you use a host code and you have a selection of, there's a bunch of host codes in my, under my shop menu. You just click on shop and it's going to say current host codes. You click there um, and you can pick anybody's host code. You can pick some club um, hostess's code or whatever, but you, you add a host code to a $50 order. You're going to earn that PDF, um, that exclusive PDF that you can keep in your stash of, um, of files. And then you can click on the links when you have time and you can see a video uh, featuring products from those two publications. I did my video on the rainbow bundle, or I should say rainbow collection, because there's a set of papers that you can earn for free during celebration. And then there's a cloud punch that's not in the bundle, it's sold separately, but definitely a part that you should add into the rainbow um, bundle. Um, but anyways, I showed that in my video and what each video has is it talks about the products in a whole, and then it um, the video shows all these different samples that the demonstrator made with that product, and then there's a featured project that you can learn how to make. So the PDF will um, have the, the measurements and the supply list. So you'll wanna get your hands on it. You can also get your hands on it by being part of my Stampers with Art group. That is my group of discount shoppers slash demonstrators. We're all called demonstrators, but I have to tell you that majority of the demonstrators that get the starter kit are in it for the discount for themselves. So please don't feel weird if you want to do that yourself. And the kit this month and through the end of um, February, so during celebration, uh, is a special because what you get is you get to add on two free stamp sets of your choice. They might be flowing flowers, they might be the uh, island, uh, not, sorry, not island vibes, gentle waves. You can't pick anything that's free or earned, like you can't pick host sets or celebration, but you can pick any two other stamp sets in this starter kit. And the starter kit you can find 
um, a link to that in my join um, my join tab. But anyways, yeah, fun stuff. Oh, and the the starter kit is always a great special, up to $125 worth of product for $99, free shipping. But now you get to add on two free stamp sets. I mean, it's it's really a steal. So. So those are the ways that you can get it. You can also purchase it. So if you're a demonstrator and you're watching this video, you're like, I'm not gonna buy from you and I'm already a demonstrator. Well, you can purchase the PDF if you'd like to also. So sorry, I didn't mean to exclude, exclude anybody. Um, but yes, it's purchasable as well. Um, That's it, I'm gonna let you guys, oh, you gotta do prizes, prizes, prizes. I completely forgot because I'm so excited about all this new stuff. Um, we have prizes. Last week we had, um, we had the prize was the pick of a tutorial for free and yes that could be the virtual um this week's prizes are stamp sets these are stamp sets that i've had sitting around some of them most of them are past celebration stamp sets or current celebration stamp sets so i'll show you those in just a minute but let me move to my computer screen and we're going to bring up um sorry there we go we're going to bring up the commenter from the after live comments, the one that won. I'm the one that won. Um, so, <laughs> so here we go. Nell, Nell De Silvia, uh, you won a pick of a cell of a tutorial. So yay. I will um, try to be in contact with you via your comment that you left on the after live because I can comment on those comments. I will leave you a comment so that you can hopefully see it and reach out to me. And then it looks like we've got some winners that Trisha has called out. We have uh, Kapelminski, Kapelminski and Patricia Weed for our, um, our winners for right now. And what do you get to pick from? Kapelminski, that must be like, I don't know. Is that part of an email address? I don't know, anyways. <laughs> Um, I hope I pronounced it right. And then Patricia Weed. So the first person to reach out gets the stamp set <laughs> that they want first. But we have Driving By. Super cute with paper piecing. Have you seen what uh, Patty Bennett did with this? So you take and you stamp it and then you stamp it on some pattern paper. You cut out just the area that you want to have colored in on your van or your automobile or your, you know, fast automobile and you stick it down there and then you've got this instantly colored um, automobile from from paper pe the paper piecing technique super cute what she did um, so I have I have one of those I have two catching butterfly um, uh, freebies these are all current by the way the ones that I'm showing right now awesome otters I have this stamp set two of those and then we have some past sets um, Luann Peterson contributed this past, uh, these past sets to us. So thank you so much, Luann. Uh, Feels Like Home. This was a past celebration. Counting Sheep, super popular one that um, cannot be left out of your collection if you don't have it. And then In Your Words is another past celebration um, stamp set. This was a host one, it looks like. So that must have been our exclusive. I can't remember. You know, there's so much fun new stuff that comes along that I sometimes forget. <laughs> but I hope that that gives you a good idea of um, something that you might not have that you want as a prize. Congratulations to all the winners. And Patty Bennett credited, I just saw your comment, Tracy. Got the idea from Lena Gursa. Okay, awesome. Awesome. Congratulations to all the winners. And thank you to Patty and Lena for that great idea about the paper piercing with this stamp set. I am going to sign off, but before I do, I just want to invite you to come visit again next week. Um, I am back on track. We don't have the holidays anymore or anything in the way as far as anything in the near future. So no surgeries coming up. <laughs> so I will see you back next week, hopefully at 12, I'm sorry, not 12, 15, at 11 a.m. Central Time on January 19th. This blog post will go live in 20 minutes at 12.15, so remember to click on that link. Thank you to Trisha, and a big um, thank you to anybody who's new, and a thank you to all of you participating in the live comments, because it makes it more fun when we have some conversations going, going on. Um, I'll let you all go. Thanks, everybody. Now I'd like you all to go and stamp your art out. Bye-bye.